That's a long meeting with Vince. Oh, man. Big meeting with Vince today. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I'm planning our we, uh, Richmond excursion. Okay. Okay. Is it called an excursion oh, it's very, now? Or? Well, it's very Chevy Chase uh, meets Three Stooges. Uh, <laughs> it's very Chevy Chase. -ish. Family vacation? Oh, yeah, very family vacation. Okay. I'm going to be the dead grandma on top of the ring truck. <laughs> okay. That they didn't want to leave, so they tied her to the top of the truck. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Shh. Quiet, quiet on the set, please. Very important TV show. We'll be on later after us. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Daddy. You wrestle. You hear the claps. You know yeah. what time it is, George. How was your Boy, weekend? I am overly enthusiastic. Okay, I think that's the right word to use. But I uh, just had a great, great meeting with Vince in his office. A lot of big things happening uh, in okay. the wrestling world. That's all I'm saying. And we're going to have uh, our, uh, we're going to get a piece of the pie, uh, no matter uh, what goes on. So anyway, a lot of stuff going on, Bullet. Uh, I want to uh, uh, thank you, uh, Bullet, for getting back off of your big whirlwind. You had one one heck of a trip, Bullet, yeah. I think, didn't you? And I about uh, ready to take off for another one. No, oh, oh. So. Uh, and I'll share up here a little bit because I want to hear a little bit about uh, the undefeated streak for you, uh, Northeast Wrestling, still. No, no winless. It, oh, winless. It's not uh, undefeated. It's, oh, it's, my, it's my defeated streak. <laughs> I got like that. But nice. anyway, uh, thank all you great fans for tuning in. A lot of stuff going on here uh, at Dad You Don't Work You Wrestle Studios. Uh, a lot of cleaning up being done around here. A little expansions going on. Uh, a lot of stuff. I would jump on board personally. If I just come in, uh, you know, from a, a hanging out at a bar or whatever, got in, turn on cable access. Well, you wouldn't see us because we're not on cable access yet. But if I just happened to stumble on somebody's laptop and found that you don't work your wrestle television show, uh, I would probably jump on board of this train. Listen, I, I've, I've been doing a lot of research. It sounds like, uh, you know, less people are watching local news and watching less TV. Yes. This, this whole YouTube thing may blow up for well, us, George. Hey. We may be more of a voice <laughs> than, than, than Larry Sprinkles, oh, our oh, local weatherman. Oh, I, I love that. I may be doing the weather here on Daddy Don't Work, You Wrestle very well, soon. Oh, I love that. Because I might have a larger audience than the, the nightly news. But now let me tell you sure. something. But that is a very strong point as we get ready to, to get into the show here. As you know, a little inside kayfabe scoop on a weatherman, and you would do good at it. Nobody else would. Is you actually have to pinpoint to the weather with nothing on the screen. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Because they, they kind of, I'm sorry, they kind of blue screen it, a black green screen it or whatever. So you actually point to a thunderstorm over Iowa, but there's nothing there over Iowa. But, okay? No, there's, trust me, I'm from Iowa. There's nothing <laughs> over Iowa. Nothing. So, but. Except uh, a bunch of planes flying over. But listen, but wrestlers nowadays, it would all have to be drawn out for them. It's one of kind of the punchline there, Bullet. But you'd be okay. Just call it as you went. But anyway, a lot of stuff going on, Bullet. I uh, had a great, great week uh, uh, this past week for me, uh, personally. Uh, great event Saturday night, of course, uh, in Gastonia for the Gastonia Police. Uh, uh, I uh, officially killed the Ugly Ducklings. I want you to know that. Uh, with, it was uh, me and the Heat Seekers against the Ugly Ducklings. So uh, it was actually, I, boy, I was so proud of myself. I told everybody, I will, I'm going to leave my table precisely 45 seconds before it's time to go to the ring. Everybody kind of joked, ha, ha, that's a good one, George. That's good. I left my table. Precisely 45 seconds before it was time. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just uh, just real neat bullet. So anyway, I actually went out there, and, and believe it or not, it was not as bad as someone may expect uh, okay. bullet. Everybody got out alive. Nobody dove on me, which that's the main thing. Uh, and uh, got to spend some time with Java Guerrero Jr. What was so, uh, the bonding moment for me was to be pulling out Stevie Richards figures, piles of them, onto my table, and it was like, it was like a ghost movie. I mean, it's like uh, a Patrick Swayze ghost, and Stevie Richards walks up. But not some guy that I call Stevie Richards. Yeah. Like Caleb Conjure. You actually have Stevie Richards yeah. figures. Oh, oh, I did. So, H hence why you're, you've got a legendary comment, which people in the Northeast was telling me about. Oh. Uh, I was like, uh, why does this wrestling show have to get in the way of me that's selling, exactly right. selling my gimmicks? Oh, exactly. So. Is that all this wrestling is interfering with my gimmick sales. That's and right, that's, that's a true that's... story. But to have Stevie Richards... We bonded just for a minute. And then, Bullet, before he realized what I was doing, he was, I was actually saying, do you know what it does for uh, my grandbaby's cookie fund to actually be able to promote an action figure with the actual guy? Now, there was a dispute because I did have John Schuyler on the event, and sometimes they're John Schuyler figures. Yes. But you know what saved it for me? When Stevie Richards came to the ring for his match dressed in the attire that my action figures got. 
I'm talking the long black look, the very TNA ish look. So, not t shirt, end up uh, BWO, but action figure look. So, thank you, Stevie Richards. Uh, tomorrow morning, I want to go eat lunch with Michaela. Uh, there will be a huge deposit made on the uh, chocolate chip cookie fund, okay? So, thank my buddy Stevie Richards. So, anyway, then there, and of course, then uh, Sunday, uh, rushed up to AML, brand new National Guard Army Bullet. I, I try to remember, I know the Army, but I think me and you appeared there for double trouble in Winston-Salem at that old armory many, many years ago, Bullet, when 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 you first just stopped in to say, hey. and, and I believe that was and, the day where we wrestled three times a yes, day, and yes. I, tried to, I tried to document it, <laughs> but we ran out of battery because we had Dory on the camera, and Dory just had like, uh -oh, the yeah. camera on and was just waving around and not recording anything. So like I ran out of tape at the end, so I was like, well, if we don't get the point of me wrestling for a third time, yes. I've got nothing to put no. out into the world. Uh, yes. Bullet, they came in. Uh, at first, it didn't even look the same. I mean, of course, it didn't look the same, but they came in. I mean, it, it is the nicest, immaculate army. It does, National Guard Armory Pro Wrestling does not fit this building. I mean, brand new paved parking lots, Bullet, unbelievable dressing rooms, just immaculate. And I don't know what rent possibly could be at this place, but uh, that. But anyway, had a great, great crowd. Uh, AML came in there, got to see uh, Java Guerrero Jr. It's kind of neat. Uh, I, uh, I've seen it all, Bullet, but when he. I don't care. You can call me a Mark. I am a big Mark, uh, or I wouldn't be here doing this TV show, uh, but trying to sell a book. But when Java Guerrero Jr. goes to that top rope, not Jimmy Snooker-ish, but tribute to his brother, Eddie Guerrero. You, Bolt, I'm going to tell you, you cannot be a wrestling fan if you didn't get a little uh, uh, goose bumpy. And then yeah. he did the frog splash. Bolt, uh, it was just, if someone would have kicked out, I'd have killed him. I'm just saying. But that was, that was a good moment for me. Uh, of course, I was able to tell uh, tell him that. I did, Bullet. Uh, I'm learning slowly as I'm going, uh, approaching 60, year, 60 years old in a few years, is don't be a jerk right off the bat, because some people that you may think is a jerk may be a pretty good guy. I got to meet, of course, I don't watch uh, Lucha Underground. I don't even have a TV, uh, Bullet. But anyway, uh, Willie Mack, who yeah. was a big star on there, uh, of course, I don't know Willie Mack. I did not know Willie Mack prior to this, okay? So, shocker. Uh, oh, Anybody that knows, knows oh, you or oh, Willie Mack, oh, well, shocked that you, you guys don't run into you. <laughs> Much like the one yeah. time that the Young Bucks inquired about being in the Anderson Brothers Tag Team Tournament. <laughs> and you're like, who are these guys yeah. called the Young Bucks from California that want to be in my Anderson Brothers Tournament? <laughs> Which <laughs> is just a joke upon of a joke. Because the Anderson yeah. Brothers Tournament, I have uh, oh, wrestled Rick. somebody yeah. in a singles match. And, and if I won, we advanced all the way to the finals yeah. of the Anderson Brothers Tournament, and he was becoming my partner. How that with, happens with and how that works in a tournament, we were in the entire side of a tournament, was a singles match. Without a referee. Without uh, a referee. Without a referee. Without a referee. In a field, in on side of a hill. So when you run, you run in the ring. You yeah, are you, running downhill, and you're running uphill when you go back. And that's the night. That, that's the, the the event that the one tree branch was hanging over from the one tree. So you really couldn't go this way either, because we just didn't want to take time to move the tree branch. And that's also when I uh, defended the light heavyweight title when I weighed 250 pounds. <laughs> so all kinds of wrong. that's right. That's right. Uh, oh, now now the young bucks are rubbing it in my face. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, they showed uh, just, you. So. They showed you. Uh, yeah, they showed me. Uh, and so, uh, but Willie Mack, what a tremendous guy. Well, seriously. And, of course, before the show, when I saw him in the dressing room, you just, I just threw my hand up and kept going. I ain't got time for, you know, I don't want to mess with nobody. But it, hey, my concept is, brother, if you didn't, I knew he just flew in from California, but I think if you didn't help with the ring, I ain't got no time for you. I mean, really. But I actually watched his match, Timmy Lou Retton, who I uh, liked, and then I hated him when he started doing this uh, uh, stupid stuff with White Mike and, and, uh, and a stupid-looking cardboard belt, and uh, so I didn't like him. But then after this match, that was a Timmy Lou that I know, the athlete. They went, they, they, they did good. I mean, yeah, Willie I Mack, unbelievable. They, they, they had a tremendous match. So anyway, so I was able to bond with him. Willie come up and asked me, he said, do you mind if you get a picture with me? Can I get a picture with you? So I kind of marked that a little bit for us. He's a big fan, so yeah, uh, was a great. Guy. Oh yeah, shoot you! Know, yeah. Great, so, great story. You oh, know, just about anything to, to make it to wrestling. That's exactly take right. a bus to go to wrestling shows. Like that's how badly he wanted it. So. That that, and I'm hoping, and I'm sure we're gonna stay in touch. We, you know, we exchange numbers. I mean, we're gonna uh, had our, got our pictures made together. So just kind of neat. Uh, don't go on first impressions. Uh, I wouldn't have a friend in the world. Well, you wouldn't even be. We wouldn't. If, if you went on first impressions, we wouldn't even be doing this great TV show. 
What we will? I'm uh, I'm doing a podcast this Wednesday uh, with uh, this kid. Basically, I don't know nothing about him. I don't know nothing about his podcast. I don't know if anybody listens to the thing, but I'm only doing it because um, when Judd Apatow was a 17, 16 year old kid, he went around and asked for interviews with Jerry Seinfeld, Gary Shandling, and just and he just recorded it on a tape recorder. And they're very like podcast esque, but these are like. This is back in the 80s, and this is back when Jerry Seinfeld was, like, the number one com- comedian in all the land. And that guy ended up becoming Judd Apatow, who's basically the guy who runs yeah. comedy in general right wow. now. And wow. so you, n- you never know what, what these people are going to be. So yeah. my, my thought process is, like, who knows? This might be that, the, the, that, the Judd true. Apatow or professional wrestling. This, this kid may go on to be somebody or something. And, and, the, and if Jerry Seinfeld had enough time for a 16, 17-year-old Judd Apatow, I... Most certainly have enough time to talk to uh, this gentleman who I'm talking to this Wednesday. Oh, I love so that. So that's kind of that. that's kind of how I see it, you know. And I hear a lot of guys going, "Well, if it doesn't get the subscribers, I don't yeah. want to do this. I don't." Want to, and I understand that because everybody's getting bombarded, and I don't get bombarded by those podcast requests. But you know, if I just take a little bit of time, you never know what this person's going to grow up. To I be. love that. He's a young man. He could grow up and be. He could be the next no, Vincent I, Mann. I he, could, he could be the next Jeremy Borash, for all I know. Oh, and, no, and, and hire I, me I, I when I'm broken down and broke, oh. and walking around like Brute Bernard. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, I love that, so. boy. Oh, but no, that the very, very true. You know, it. it uh, I know we got to hurry and get off here, but the story I've shared with you many, many times about Johnny Weaver, about you know he tried to do everything, get uh, he could get the business, and and nobody would even give him the time of day. Big, big, and all, a lot of fans saying who, but he was a big, big, big face here in the Carolinas for many years and all over the world. But anyway, uh, the quick story of just two people, promoters saying. And, you know, the uh, next guy comes to that door, just that little friendly competition. Here comes a guy that tried everything in the world to get in our business, one of the hugest stars in wrestling, but then he just happened to walk in. You know, just being something like you said, you never know where something is going to uh, lead to. My whole career, personally, but for the last 40 years is, uh, uh, it, it, you know, I've never had an agent, never anything like that. It's just one thing always leads to another, yeah. like you said. And if you believe in yourself, that's going to happen. So, anyway, uh, not along those lines, but we do got an idiot of the week. Real quick, okay. Bullet. Somebody uh, who should not believe in themselves at all. No, exactly. And boy, this is going to be real quick here. You know, I'm always at a wrestling show. I get in my little zone world, and I really, uh, well, I don't like people anyway, but especially at a wrestling show. And But I will, get, I love giving advice. Uh, you know, this is not uh, the idiot of the week, but uh, the whole concept nowadays of a battle roll, I, I love a battle roll personally if it's done right. But nowadays, of course, a battle roll, all it is is for somebody to do a high spot. And that's not, the whole object of a battle roll is to throw somebody out, not to beat them beat them down, not to get two and then have a match. That's mm-hmm. not the concept. You, you can pin a guy in a battle roll and not win it. But anyway, they ain't got nothing to do with it. But anyway, this this weekend, now there's two shows. I, w- I won't release the name, but I'm hoping to give a few hints that people will know who these idiots are. I'm going to throw all three of them. It's a six. It's a three-way, a three-team, 16. It's a three guys. What do you call three? It's a tag team with three guys. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but not a three-way where it looks like you just ran out of guys and you should have found somebody. But anyway, so they come up and ask me, uh, Mr. South, which uh, that gave it away right then, but they said, and it may have been Saturday show, it may have been Sunday show. I'm not going to give that out yet. But anyway, they said, could you uh, watch our could you watch our match and kind of critique it? And I usually say yes and then don't pay attention. But I said, uh, I said well, yeah, they said, because we got this uh, great finish that we want to do. And I said, oh, my God. You have to even say that, because then, then I'm on the level where I don't like you. But anyway, here's what they're going to do. We're going to get out of here. They're going to eat a week. Here's what they want to do. The, uh, it turned out to be it's going to be a tag match, but the third guy's coming to the ring, and he said, "I'm going to come to the ring with my guys, and I'm going to be standing on the apron while they're uh, standing on the floor while they're wrestling, and then I'm going to slide under the ring, okay? I'm, and that's, that's the key word. I'm going to slide under the ring, and then as they continue to wrestle for a little bit." I'm going to get out on the side of the ring, and then I'm going to help them. I'm going to uh, interfere and help my guys win. Okay? I said, okay, well, I understand all that, but so you're telling me, goof, you're going to come out, let the people see you, you know what I'm saying? Because in our thinking, bullet, Tommy Richish, shouldn't we put you under the ring at like 2 in the afternoon with a case of beer? Uh, that's what I'm saying. But uh, I said, so you're going to go to the ring, get in the ring with your part, your people. They get introduced, you step on the floor, the match starts, somewhere in the match, he slides under the ring. Mm-hmm. Okay, boy? And when I ask him about this, this idiot, which I'm going to throw all of them in the ring because they're, connect- they're connected, his logic was, once he slides under there, the people will forget him. The people will forget. Which, 
Bodes a lot of confidence for how oh, your oh, career is going. Oh yes, it should. The only person that probably could slide underneath the ring, <coughs> even even if, uh, as a legal man or in a singles match, <coughs> would be probably be me. Yeah. Because I, I would <laughs> I'd probably be wouldn't even be missed at all. Like in, in a singles match, I could just slide but, underneath the ring. Like, but, but hey, what, wasn't there supposed to be somebody else in here? But, nah, they are just whatever. But, but what's great about this idiot? Before I throw him in here, is. This particular ring has just got brand new ring aprons, which are beautiful, but they're very thinnish. Okay. So when you're sitting down, you can almost see through. Them. You can see through them. Okay, but I did not reveal that. Okay, so as he's telling me this, I've done lost all faith in humanity that this guy is going to do this. Okay, so I said, great, that's what you should do. I think that's great. So believe it or not, boy, as I wad all three of these guys up, throw them in. That is what they did. All three goes to the ring. High five and clapping, trying to be cool, but they're not really. They get on the apron, they work for about five minutes, and then all of a sudden, brother disappeared. I mean, brother just disappeared. Okay, everybody saw him. Nobody even cared. But anyway, about six minutes later, bullet brothers out there probably sweating, nothing to drink. We see him wiggle, cause brother's so stupid. Every now and then he hits the apron. Bullet, you know how you in the shower taking a shower and a shower curtain the wind blows a little bit the shower curtain kind of it hits you on the back side and it feels awful and you kind of punch it back away yeah. from you or just turn the cold water on it like i do and of course it floods the whole floor that's a whole other story uh, okay. so bullet that the every now and then you saw the apron fly now i'm thinking surely they don't think i mean really so bullet the, they're going to the finish guess what folks not to spoil the surprise if you watch the dvd later but brother comes out the other end. Surprise, bullet. Of course, everybody was completely fooled, okay? No, not a chance, bullet. So anyway, they did the finish. Worst finish in history of wrestling. So my uh, uh, advice, uh, didn't give them no advice later, but I didn't want to talk to them. As I throw them in the idiot bag, that should probably be done, even though it's been done a few times. It, I don't think Lawler, uh, Austin Idol, and, and Timber's got anything to worry about. Okay, uh, 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 if anybody thinks you're going to be one over them, I think if you're going to throw somebody out of the ring, do it like maybe the day before, you see, boy, or early that afternoon. That, that's just my advice. So uh, that is my advice to all you up and coming guys. If you want to disappear, uh, of course we know a few promoters that could give you some great advice on uh, disappearing, uh, bullet. But anyway, so the, that 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 three man out of the six will go in the idiot bag. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm sorry, boy. No, we'll okay. go we'll go in the idiot bag. Okay. If you're gonna you can't let people, believe me, I've tried it. You can't let people see you and then try to hide. Okay, don't work that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they will go in the idiot bag for this week. Okay? Well, well, so, since we're doing here, I might as well put somebody in. Let me oh, put somebody in the idiot bag. Oh, boy, boy. Okay. Uh, I always want to do this. Please. Uh, I've always uh, to do this. I was at my, sh at my show that I ran, the All Organic Open Mic, which uh, Carlos Valencia had a wonderful CD taping. And, of course, we did the open mic afterwards. And there was a gentleman who said he, he was a comedian from Philadelphia. He said he drove uh, a couple hundred miles to be there. So he gave him some time, gave him a good spot. You know, no problem. Uh, very nice guy, but uh, not very funny. <laughs> The thing is, me. But but at the boogie. same time, too, it was a tough room because we had just finished a 50-minute taping that was just wall-to-wall -wall funny and good. It's very oh, wow. hard to follow Frank oh. Sinatra. Oh, yes. Okay? Oh, it's yes. Very, oh, I love that. It's very hard. There's a couple of the comedians. I believe he was second or third, so the crowd hadn't been readjusted yet. People are getting up, getting drinks, getting in the bathroom. So it was tough. Oh. So I don't. Oh, but at the same time, too, what I heard was not, I was not very impressed. Yes. He decides to finish his comedic set by dropping the microphone. Oh, bullet. Oh, bullet. That's, oh my gosh. I can hear Corky somewhere off in the distance freaking out. Our probably probably sounded a lot like what I said to the man when he got off stage. <laughs> um, I explained to the... Oh, that killed it. Of course, I, I have to go back up as the MC. I pick it up. Uh, I berate him. You probably got better laughs by... Picking the mic up, boy, than he did. Oh, yeah, and then the subsequent 30 seconds after that, <laughs> and telling him, I go, hey, if you're going to drop the microphone uh, like you did something, make sure you do something. Like, tell a joke. <laughs> oh, uh, boy. Went off. And it's like, oh, and, and it oh, goes, it goes uh, by the way, Dang. I don't condone this because I don't have money to pay for a new microphone. Uh, oh, boy. But Donnie can put it on my bill. Oh. So I go, and, and, and then afterwards, oh. the guy comes up and he starts shaking my hand. 
and, oh, and wow, I explain to him that you don't drop the microphone. He goes, well, I'm from Philly. That's how we do it. And I go, do you guys have microphones that grow on trees in Philadelphia? George, oh, we need well, to go to Philadelphia. Oh, yes, we do. Because we, we need a new microphone for this camera, because apparently microphones grow on trees in Philadelphia. Holy cow. Well, I, I don't know where in Philadelphia where you do comedy well, where you I just drop the microphone. But, I, I oh, yeah. don't know where that is, because after three comics, you have to replace the <laughs> microphone. So, I, as he's shaking my hand, uh, I go, you make sure you apologize to the owner. Oh, yes. I pointed Thank at you, him, he's like, you make sure oh, you do God. it, because it was right. right in front of him. He oh. was there, and then he kept going, he goes, but you said I wasn't funny. Did you really mean that? And he oh, wouldn't let go oh. of my hand <laughs> until I told him that he was funny. Oh. Oh, and, and, and I go, well, I go mm. listen, you need to work on this. But no, what do you mean by me? And, and finally I finally said, yeah, you were funny. Okay, thank you. And that's all he wanted to hear, and that's all he understood. Oh, bullet. He that's... was just fishing for a compliment yes. for me to tell him he's funny. Listen, you could tell yeah. me I'm the most un unfunny person on the planet. You could tell me I'm the worst wrestler on the planet. Trust me, there's whole message boards, con uh, <laughs> discussions, and tweets. <laughs> I just wish you would at me so I know who you are who doesn't like me. I know, me. that's the thing. I, I'm sure there's internet people, podcast people that talk about how, how awful I am. I don't care. I don't need I don't need it. I'm just doing it how you do it. But he just wouldn't let go of my hand until I gave him a compliment. And oh, he oh. did this after after he most broke the microphone as the oh, second yeah, that's, person that's the big... on a 20-person list. So mm. 20 other comics, I would have to say, sorry, guys, the rest of the show is wow. canceled because this guy dropped the microphone because oh. he's from Philly, the land oh, yeah. of where microphones grow yeah, on uh, trees. very much. So. And boy, I even cringed. In, 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 right in, in there. The, yes, right very in the much. Back. In the entertainment world, bullet. even if you were someone as famous as Joe, uh, 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 Leno or Don Riggle, they, even if they did something like that, it will... For me, it's it's just one of those things you do not do. Well, you just do not do. And I I, uh, I should let you share that first. I cringe. I don't know if you noticed, oh. but but I kind of cringe just the thought of that because that's my first concept. What you said, somebody's gonna have if it's broke, somebody's got to pay for it. My you know soul went oh, outside oh. of my body. Oh boy. Ran around the block, hovered above me, and then jumped back into my body. But what you're, and even what we're saying here, even if it had got a few little stupid giggles, that was not still the most uncorrectest thing to do. That quickest way not to be invited back. And then Bullet. still sitting there wanting me to oh, say, because yeah. I said he oh, wasn't yeah. funny. He wouldn't stop shaking my hand. We oh, shook hands for five that. minutes, and I'm like, I'm not going to tell you you're funny. I'm not going to tell you you're Good funny. You. <laughs> All right, fine, you're funny. Leave me alone. I want to stop touching your hand. Hey, that's almost like a skit. We can do that, Bullet. But anyway, folks, I know we've got to get in here a little long today. Uh, Bullet, great, great. Uh, glad to have you back. I know you're fixing to head back out on the road, as yep. we both are. Uh, this weekend, up Friday, I'll be in Fayetteville. It's a rock shop. First time, uh, me and James Drake are uh, going to go at it. Uh, he's not to touch me. That's been uh, uh, discussed already. Uh, and then Saturday, of course, will be with our buddy Jason up in uh, Drexel, in AWA. Uh, I can I I already hear the discussion on James Drake on Monday. I'm like, oh. George did this, and I don't understand oh. why he did oh. this. <laughs> and I'm like, because they don't want to get hurt. That's the answer. Oh, no, no. Boy, no, <laughs> I already no, no. know how that's going to go. See, before you came into my life, boy, I used to have to, like, really try to explain stuff. Why, why they wasn't a referee. I understand why George wanted to do why? this. Because oh, yeah. he doesn't want to do no, anything. Exactly, exactly. He right. doesn't want to do anything. Uh, my second, I know we got to go, we got to uh, got to end this out. But my two favorite things, both one, of course, was my all-time famous Charles Robson when he showed up to Armory, and there was no referee in the ring. Him being a WWE official and ask you why they wasn't a ref, of course, you told him. And then, and then my second one is when we all we did that big six man. I think it was for big time wrestling, and uh, our good guys, the Bavaro brothers, uh, wanted to do that with me, and of course, I didn't do it. And and, and then you told them later, yeah, that was a great idea. But, but he ain't gonna but, do no, it because no, no, no. you can't because you were gonna tell that to him. Yeah, <laughs> that's why he wasn't gonna do it. Much like the time oh. that that's, that they had a problem with your music and they said, "Oh no, George South is coming oh. out because he got jumped in the back." I go, "Do you think he really paid for oh, yeah. somebody to jump him in the back? Oh, no. Do you think he want to take the I time to I do forgot. an angle on this show?" That's three. I forgot that. And remember, you said. People know that's not the truth because that took too much effort. That took like too much time. He said, yeah, George South, uh, he just got jumped in the back. That's why his music's not playing. And then I could hear over that building was you <laughs> saying that's a lie because Jordan wouldn't have put that much effort into an angle like that. <laughs> well, anyway, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good memories, uh, boy. But, folks, what we hope that you will purchase and read 
and not throw down is the second greatest book of all time, which hopefully you put some effort into ordering <laughs> it, which is available at highspots.com. If you want to know more about what I'm doing this weekend, which is kind of a mystery right now, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Manscout Manning or on Instagram at Manscout Manning. This has been another edition of Dad, You Don't Work, You, you Wrestle. wrestle. And it is funnier than that guy that threw the microphone. Down. Oh, that's like the, that's like the unwritten law, boy. Oh my God! On the, on probably the wood floor stage, everything else did it. Did turned it shatter it, I turned, or did it? I turned, it, I, it, I, it was okay, but yeah. I, I just turned it into Linda Blair for like five seconds. <laughs>